and City Councilman Jason Baker. Stop by, JB. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing today? Excellent. Thank you kindly. Thanks for having me. We'll be revisiting, by the way, the uh, Trump indictments at 9 o'clock with attorney at law Joe Ferretti, who will be calling in uh, from uh, Georgia this morning. Jason, I wanted to talk to you about uh, Lambert Park, Lambert Pool, because I know we've done interviews with you in the past and keeping that pool open for the residents of that area has been a key component of some of the things you value in the city of Martinsburg. And now it looks like that's not going to be able to happen. It, the, <laughs> so absolutely you're correct. Um, there's nothing more important um, than being able to have some events um, for kids and places for people to be. Um, when we got the news and with everything coming down, with the pool basically not going to be able to do anything this year. Um, we kind of knew it was going to happen at some point. Um, we knew that we had some deferred, um, well, not even deferred, because we did we went through it, but the pool's old. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's over 45 years old. Life is it's not that old, Jason. <laughs> Just saying. I understand. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, but for a pool, it is. Yeah, it is, indeed. And so, you know, when we're seeing life expectancies of anywhere from 15, 20, and then with some with some overhaul, you might get to 35 if you're really lucky. Um, and there's some issues with that park. So we knew this this day was going to come, it, but you're never prepared for it until you're prepared. Um, but keeping it a water facility mm -hmm. is definitely um, – important to me and i know it's important to other councilmen and at this moment you know we we have gone with our engineering company to get us a plan to get us some cost associated with it and everything's on the table i think we all had different visions of what this is going to be um and we need to see where the costs are and this is not going to be cheap this is going to be a multi multi million dollar um, replacement. Um, no, no matter which way we go, mm -hmm. um, they part of it because you know the city has always done really good with um, being careful with the taxpayers' money, and so when, during this, we are also going to evaluate what would it take to do an overhaul of the is the structure even worth doing an overhaul and similar to what we did at war memorial i guess at this point almost 15 years ago and now and i, I bring at this conversation is going to be happening at war memorial which most people would be like well that just happened it's well it's it's 15 yeah, years yeah. It, it, you know time flies and so this is just this is a major thing. And so, you know, water park has been discussed. There's been talks about a water park plus a four foot pool so that you could do some like volleyball, basketball inside the pool. Um, there's talks, you know, with uh, a wave pool area. And those are uh, fun. Absolutely. And uh, also, one of the things that I put in there is well, if, we're going, if it's a water park, I think it needs to be enclosed. Because in our area, we get three months of use. And then that facility that we're going to spend millions and millions of dollars on is going to sit there and sit there for the rest of the year, nine months. Mm -hmm. So that's, that, that's on the table. Um, there's still the conversation of, you know, what is the cost of a true replacement? Rip all that structure out, put a brand new facility in. And so, so all that's on the table at this moment. Bill? Yeah, several questions, Jason. One, thanks for coming in. Uh, we've been hearing the last two or three weeks reason for uh, Lambert Park uh, uh, demise, uh, one of which is the water level is high around it. Another one is it's old. Uh, let me mine down a little bit on both of those. Uh, old, what do we mean? Do we mean the uh, the concrete is fatigued, uh, the rebar is uh, – is uh, has rusted away uh, the liner uh, can be replaced what do we mean by old that is that that we cannot take remedial action on it and also the same thing with the water level so the water level doesn't bother me at all okay so I know that 
um, Steve Catlett, who has many more years of experience Certainly. than yeah. I do, so I will respect him. But I am in construction, and what was unthought, impossible 20 years ago is not that big of a deal today, and the cost isn't huge. If it's determined that there is a heavy hydroflow of water that is pushing um, into the pool and causing some of that damage, there's ways of mediating that. And if again, we've lived with about 40 years with high water level as well, so that's not new. Absolutely. Yeah. And and in that area, anybody that's from my ward that's in that in that probably six, seven, eight block radius knows that your basement gets wet. Um, there's not as many basements in that area as you're going to find on the other side of town. But I want to go back to the maintenance part because I, I think that that's a key. Where you we're going to see that is what happened this year, where we don't know where the blockage is. Something has failed. We don't know why we're not getting the flow. Okay, Be- let me interrupt you there. So that's a different twist. I, when you said it was old, I jumped on the assumption there was uh, structurally uh, structural problems. But what you're saying now, that's not the case. It's something dealing with mechanics. It could be mechanical, but we also put a liner in it, uh, I want to say three years ago. Okay. And the reason for that was because there was some separation in the pool, hmm. and we put a liner inside that pool to get more life yeah. out of it. Um, and, and here's where it is. It, we have put Band-Aids um, on this pool to keep it operational. The council supported that. Um, I was a big advocate. I've been on this radio station pushing mm-hmm. to, that it was important to keep this pool open. And I I think it's important that we all knew it was going to happen. And, I, and if you made me go back in time six, seven years ago when Steve wanted to close my pool. Um, <laughs> I remember. Yeah. I would have fought the same way and think the same the same thing. You know, we had a lot of projects that were going on. And financially, I don't know that we could have overtaken it. And so what would have happened is it would have just been tore down and there would have just been a piece of ground there so at least over the last six seven years we've had a pull um but now it's it's time to pay the piper and we are gonna have to spend it but i think that's more of the age without have because no one there hasn't been a structural integrity of the building our engineer is going to do that so once that's done i can actually give you a better answer is the structure itself okay but what I've heard from you, Jason, is only two two things that emerged recently. One is the separation of the liner from certain sections in the pool. And and the, probably there's a reason for it, but liners can be replaced. And if there's separation, that can be addressed. The other one is the flow into the pool, and that's mechanical. Both of which seem to me on the surface can be are fixable items. So the... The issue of this year that was the uh, the major issue, um, they had dozens of companies trying to fix that. They still have the, the inflow, the flow problem. Yes. Okay. Okay. They still can't find it. The only baseline that we have is to replace all of those pipes. That's probably somewhere in the million to two million dollar range. Okay. Um, and then let's be honest. Once you're at that point, you're already in the deck, which means all new concrete. We've also had to replace decking around there. Um, we also had a pump problem that they, you know, the pump was outdated and replacement. So the the question becomes, and the liner is had crack. We put the liner in. We've had to patch the liner because anytime you have two structures that are moving, <clears throat> you're going to rip the liner again. And so it wasn't necessarily cheap. And it just gets to an operational thing of what are we going to do? Where are we, you know, it, it's, you're going to put good money to bad money just just putting some more Band-Aids on this pool. Um, and this was a, look, seems to be a very expensive Band-Aid, multi-million dollar Band-Aid. And honestly, as a councilman, I think that that was when I pumped the brakes and said, there's, I, can, I can't in good conscience spend one to two million dollars of city money for an old structure without having a complete study done to understand that this structure is going to last 
another 20 years, it would just it, it wouldn't be uh, the right thing to do with taxpayers money. Maria. So one of the things when I heard um, uh, Steve Catlett the other day talking about, obviously, the, the whole thing is going to cost a lot of money. And I heard him speak perhaps a little bit more about perhaps WVU Medicine uh, joining the, the team, so to speak. There was some discussion about Shepard, but I think he was speaking more in reference to the fact that Shepard has an aquatic facility. Um, obviously, you just talked about taxpayer money, um, and I commented that years ago I sat on the committee that looked at in closing War Memorial, possibly building another structure that was um, that was an inside structure. I mean, where does the money come from? I mean, are people, uh, you know, people were not willing at that time. The levy vote it was it had to be sixty percent and was perilously close, but it didn't didn't go over the mark because you know it's it's tax money and so, their taxes are going to go up. So, what do we do to that end? So I think as far as paying for it, Mm -hmm. I think with the amount of structure, you know, obviously, Steve, now being on the county council, we're we're hopefully we're going to they would hopefully help with it. Um, And depending on what it becomes, what we end up deciding, you know, if it's a small water park facility, Mm -hmm. you know, if we're going to float a bond using you know currently parks and rec gets their portion of three percent of the hotel motel right um when we did the 2000 rec center we used the hotel motel Mm -hmm. um to pay for that a percentage of it and they got the other percentage we could go back to some situation like that Um, but i definitely think it's going to be a multi we're not going to pay cash for this, mm-hmm. no matter what. So I think that that's how we're going to pay for the facility. As far as the Aqua Center that has been floated by West Virginia Medicine, mm-hmm. um, I might see that in my life. Mm-hmm. It's starting to sound more like Route Nine extension to uh, <laughs> Berkeley Springs. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't think the day. hospital idea has been serious since Tony Zelenka left. And I, from what I understand of their long range plans, it's nowhere in it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just don't think. I just don't see it happening. And and actually, I was having a, a, a uh, I had a call with the mayor a couple, about a week ago, and and I've always been big about the Aqua Center, a, about having a, a a a building. But when I've heard that the school system is only paying somewhere like five thousand dollars or less per school to go to Shepherd, are they ever really going to be interested in being partners with anybody in Berkeley County? Twenty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars every ten years, four hundred thousand dollars for by the time that pool needs to be done. I don't think it would ever make sense if I was on the school board. I don't know that I would ever endorse a pool being at a school when I for four hundred thousand for the same amount of time I can send them to Shepherd. Mm-hmm. But you but, talk to those kids, uh, those parents too. Um, I was involved in shuttling very, um, very irregularly an exchange student to Shepard um, who was on the swim team at Martinsburg. And it was like, you know, their time was from nine until quarter of 10 each night because you've got all those schools using that. And then the other thing I hadn't, it didn't even strike me that all those swim teams that usually used Lambert didn't have anything. You know, they had to go to Winchester, or whatever the summer to, um, to do that you know, and if you're looking at, you know, quality of life issues and recreation for young people, you know, isn't that just a, a no brainer? Um, I, I think the answer is yes, especially when we're, we're having conversation. The problem is, is was, was your first question mm-hmm. is paying for it. And I think one of the more unique ways of paying for it is, you know, Hagerstown, Plotner, Potner, Potner, Pool. It's run by the YMCA. Um, and I like what Parks and Recs d- does, but if we did an indoor facility, that is a big difference in, in operational cost. Sure. Yeah. And so... Who's going to pay for the ongoing? I hear what you're Steve, saying. Steve mentioned that yesterday. Yeah. So we're talking it, a couple million a so year, it, I think. So it might be a 
private public partnership, partnership that makes the most sense. And I know the, the hospital is weirdly private public themselves, but a true private company. Um, and I know that the YMCA has had some interest in the Eastern Panhandle. Um, I don't know that it's went too much. I've never really been in the conversations myself. I've just heard from other people and rumors. Um, but maybe there's other other facilities out there. And I, th- are we, I think everything's on the table to try to get that stuff funded in, in operation. Are we actively looking? Who is a champion of trying to find a way to fund this problem? Or is this kind of around the table group group? I think you have – you have a couple of us councilmen that are taking the lead. Um, you're looking at one. Um, Corey Roman's also been one that is his his champion for a good facility. But I don't think there's any op, op, there's no there's no one against it. Oh, well, I'm sure it's but it's aspirational at this point in time. It needs to move from aspirational to actual practicality. You mentioned earlier, uh, Jason, that would not pay for it in cash uh, yet. Uh, Martinsburg has, I think, a fairly healthy, robust history of paying for things in cash, such as the police building, mm-hmm. and which you, t- you guys uh, uh, took some well-deserved credit for making that happen. Uh, this, to me, uh, since it cuts a wide spectrum of our demographics, all the way from children to seniors, uh, would be something to be very appealing. Uh, and I also, I think Maria's right that previously uh, they had it as a levy, and it has to be a super levy with 60%, and that is a heavy lift. Uh, but by the same token, again, go back to demographics, you're appealing to a large number of people. And the spa- splash pool to me is kind of a, a diversion that takes care of a segment. Children, a segment of mm-hmm. the children, but it does not address uh, the other segments, i.e. the seniors. Oh, I agree with you, but I don't know that you're ever going to – one facility is never going to be able to, to take care of all the needs. Um, you're, you're going to get complicated. But this is the thing that comes to me, and I, and I go back to putting it inside. If it goes down to whatever we're doing, about putting a roof over it, I'd rather spend that money, eight, nine, ten million million, $10 for this reason. Three months a year. I agree. So for three to four months a year, we have a great park system. We have pools that we can go to. We have basketball courts. We have tennis courts. We have pickleball courts. We have all these things that we have. Then normally here in West Virginia, right about by mid-September, October, it starts getting chilly. And you don't want to be outside. You're definitely not going to want to be in water. And so I think that doing something inside, even if it is a water park facility with a pool, but something that can be ran 12 months a year to give these kids something to do other than just at the 2000 Rec Center, which we, it's it's public knowledge, we've had some issues in the 2000 Rec Center in the last six months. Um, And to give them somewhere else to go, I think an extra benefit. And if we're gonna float a bond, I think that you do it, not necessarily for Lambert Pool, We're going to put a pool in and we're going to do this. But it is a bigger bigger project of we want an all-seasons recreational facility, stuff that is going to appeal to seniors, stuff that's going to appeal to my son, stuff that's going to appeal who's a teen. You know, we're we're getting beat up with social media talking about what do they know about teens? Well, I have two teens in my house. So Mm -hmm. I kind of understand a little bit. And I think that that's – no. Why we would go with that. And I agree with it. I think if you ask the, ask the people as a whole, everybody would agree with you that it's a, having a indoor 12-month-a-year 12, uh, 12 uh, facility is much preferred. That's the way our nation's going. Our, our cities are going. We, we're drifting away from these two or three months uh, facilities, something that's year-round. So I think everybody would agree with that. Uh, I'll come back to the question is, it comes to money. Uh, how aggressive are we looking? Is it something that we are just going to be talking about? No. Or is it something Sorry. that we're going to actually be uh, 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 looking under every rock possible? 
it, as long as I'm a city councilman, I will not rest until okay. there is a water facility back on Lambert Pool's spot. Fair enough. City uh, Councilman Jason Baker is our guest here on the program. So, Jason, a couple questions I have for you on this, just to close it up and wrap up our half hour with you. One, is this a City of Martinsburg financial challenge, or is it a City of Martinsburg, uh, Berkeley County, Berkeley County Schools financial challenge? I th- it's a... I think it's a city of Martinsburg financial issue that we hope that we can get some help so that we can build a state-of-the-art facility that will benefit all residents of Berkeley County. And let me can I, I speak I, to that. I, I did set okay. this up as two questions, yeah. Bill. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But I <laughs> so, wanted to respond to that you, question. You can. Okay. Okay. I promise you, you will. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the next part of that is Martinsburg currently has a 1% sales tax in the city. And that created some surplus revenue early on. But now it's been in place for a while. Is all of that money accounted for in a way that none could be diverted to be put toward a project like this? We can always divert. The, the issue is, is yes, can we divert to 300000 Mark Spickler's going to kill me, but probably the answer is yes. But if we get into the point of a $10 million project, it's millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. And yes, we have the 1% sales tax. We've done some projects with it. We've been busy. And, you know, we paid cash for the police station. We paid cash for the, the city hall. I agree with those decisions. I think that is smart government. It's the right government. Um, you know, we have the, the, the walking path. We are going to extend that walking path out to um, the Lake baseball Thomas. field. <laughs> Wait, Lake, Tom- no, no. Lake Thomas. That's the other piece. Yeah. Lake, Lake Thomas is on the is on the thing. The your our city has been ultra aggressive on major projects. The underpass that people I think it, they want to see what's next. When I when I tell you that our we don't have those reserves mm-hmm. because we've paid for this stuff, and I think that the avenue is going to be more. We're going to have help from outside people, or we do a private-public partnership somewhere in that way, or it's going to be a bond. I truly think those are the three things. Or, and I don't want this, it's you're going to put it in a, in a pot until you get enough that you can actually do something. And that maybe is two, three, five, six, ten years, and that's not okay. And the price tag keeps going up every year with inflation. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, uh, Jason, you mentioned uh, something about the county and the uh, and the city. Uh, there has been a history uh, that the city has looked to the county for partnership when they need financial support, but when it comes to management, then there's been a push pushback arms off i would hope we would go forward to this our county is too small to look at martinsburg as a as a separate entity in the county as a surrounding entity we're too small to do that we need to be integrated uh, i would hope that the discussions with the county there'd be a true partnership and not just a one-way partnership has been in the past well i i think having good good partners with the county is yeah. important i've always done that actually um, I get along, have always gotten along really well with most of the county councils in my tenure. But I, I think this is an important fact. It, it, when the city gets involved with stuff that's outside of the city, a city resident is also a county resident. That's exactly. But a county resident doesn't necessarily have to be a city resident. So when city money goes outside of the county, which has been asked of us multiple times in my tenure, I I have issues with that because of that reason but that doesn't mean yeah. being part of the group yeah. and having conversations yeah. Yeah. that i agree with you 100 percent. we need better relationships we it'll be a better berkeley county yeah. which makes a better martinsburg yeah. anything final from you maria i'm good very good thank J- you jason any final thoughts from you no i'm good today hey thanks so much for coming in i do appreciate it anytime thank you always you. give us great information jason baker city councilman at 902 and this information and this segment of the show brought